While the retirement experts are saying you need eight times your income to be able to retire comfortably, most people don't even get to two times their income as they draw close to retirement age. Think about it. The, the top 10% of the income earners have 251,000 and they only have 450,000 stocked away. That's not even two times and they're supposed to get to eight times, right? So there is a massive savings gap right now. If you can believe it, roughly 45% of all households currently have zero saved for retirement. Zero. And that's according to the National Institute on Retirement Security. The, these numbers get worse and worse and worse when you add these metrics in. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180. And for this video, we're gonna be talking about rethinking 401ks in your life and really coming at it from a different perspective. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know how I feel about 401ks. I've done a playlist called the 10 perils of your 401k. I'll link it above. I'll put it actually on the end screen as well because I think it's really important. But in the meantime, you're gonna wanna make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell. That way you get notified every time I launch a new video because I've got a lot of content coming out on this topic about how to reach financial freedom. As I go through this video, I'm gonna be exposing and showing and sharing with you a lot of the information that I've read and researched and I've compiled it and kind of organized it in a way that I think is gonna help you understand. And I think if you watch this video all the way to the end, you'll understand why I feel so strongly against 401ks because it's not just my opinion, it's not just the math, it's, I mean, math has a big thing to do with it, but it is the fact that even the founding fathers and mothers of 401k, people who are huge advocates for 401k taking the role as the primary savings vehicle for retirement in the United States. While they used to be huge advocates for it, they have since said that they regret it. So before I get there, let me start from the top. So we have to do a little history. Now, we gotta go back in time. So when 401ks were first introduced in the early 80s, there was a lot of hope, a lot of excitement about them being a great additional supplement to pension plans and the traditional retirement planning, right? Sadly, since 1981, the amount of private sector employees with pension plans has dropped from near 30% to around 2%. Think about that. That is a massive reduction in people with pension plans. Now, the former head of the American Society of Pension Actuaries, say that 10 times fast, his name is Gerald Facciani. And he was a key player. He played a key role in squashing President Reagan's bid to kill 401ks in 1986. I don't know if you knew that, but in 1986, President Reagan actually tried to kill 401ks in this country, right? Now, ironically, since then, Facciani has been quoted as saying, the great lie is that the 401k was capable of replacing the old system of pensions. The 401k was oversold, end quote. Now think about it. This guy was known as the father, right, of, of 401ks, and he is now saying that it was oversold to us as a nation. Now, while companies flocked to the 401k because it gave them more control on how they could contribute and they wouldn't need to keep contributing uh, once somebody retired, which ultimately helped them control their costs, the reality is that expectations of 401k performances were never in alignment with reality for the first two decades of its inception. You see, the risk there is that while pension plans provide guaranteed income for life when you retire, 401ks rise and fall with financial markets. So even if you save enough, you could have a bad year or a bad couple years at the wrong time as you near retirement, and it can destroy your entire financial plan. To make it worse, the majority of people are not saving in a 401k, even if they're eligible. According to a Wall Street Journal report, just 61% of eligible workers are currently saving in 401ks, and most have never, never calculated how much they need to actually retire comfortably. So the question is, how much money do you need? According to the financial experts, quote unquote, people need to accumulate at least eight times their annual salary to be able to retire safely. Now. I'm not gonna get into the accuracy of that number, but I'm just gonna roll with it for now. Even according to that metric, which I will say I think is low, all levels of income are falling short for what they need, according to that statistic, right? So for people age 50 to 64, the bottom half of earners have a median income of 32,000 and retirement assets of 25,000. Remember, they need eight times that 32,000, but most people have 25,000. And this is all according uh, to, an, uh, to the analysis of the federal data by the New School's Schwartz Center of Economic Policy Analysis in New York. 
right? Say that 10 times fast. Now the middle 40% of income earners in the United States earn $97,000 a year and they've saved $121,000. Now, while that's a little bit better, uh, it's still nowhere near where they need to be. And here's where it gets really scary. Even the top 10% of income earners in the United States that make household incomes of $251,000 have only $450,000 socked away. And if you were to look at the eight times metric that, that the Institute says you need to have, you would need to have $2 million for the top 10% of households to be able to retire comfortably without reducing your standard of living. While the retirement experts are saying you need eight times your income to be able to retire comfortably, most people don't even get to two times their income as they draw close to retirement age. Think about it, the, the top 10% of the income earners have 251,000 and they only have 450,000 stocked away. That's not even two times and they're supposed to get to eight times, right? So there is a massive savings gap right now. If you can believe it, roughly 45% of all households currently have zero saved for retirement, zero. And that's according to the National Institute on Retirement Security. And what makes it worse is that people are not accounting for inflation and tax implications when accounting for how much money they're gonna actually need to have access to in retirement, right? The, these numbers get worse and worse and worse when you add these metrics in. Now, at the end of the day, 52% of households are at risk of running low on retirement, which is nearly 60% higher than it was in 1983. So remember, this is, this is why I call 401ks the greatest failed financial experiment of all time. And if we go back in history and we look at 401ks and when they were first getting instituted, they were a hard sell. It was not easy to get people to convince to, from going away from traditional pension plans into uh, a, a personal uh, benefit plan, defined benefit plan like a 401k, right? Now, Ted Benna uh, was a benefits consultant with the Johnson companies. Uh, he was one of the first to propose that uh, Johnson moved from the defined pension plan uh, into 401ks. And a lot of people, because of this move and his, his trailblazing in this way, led him uh, to call, refer to him as the father of the 401k. Now, since that time, he's been quoted as saying, selling it to workers was a challenge. Employees could put aside all money tax-free but they were largely responsible for their own savings and investment choices, meaning they could profit or lose big based on markets. They also took home less money with each paycheck, which is why 401ks were commonly called as salary reduction plans. Now, this is why people like Robert Kiyosaki tout that even with the match, 401ks are a horrible plan because you shouldn't contribute to them because even if they do a match, all they're doing is they're paying you with the money that should be yours anyway. So people have had a change of heart since then. Economist Teresa Ghilarducci, who is the director of the Schwartz Center for Economic Policy Analysis, says that she offered assurances at union board meetings and congressional hearings that employees would have enough to retire if they set aside just 3% of their paychecks in a 401k. And that's with an assumption that the investments rose by 7% every year. Now, while that may have worked out for a short period of time in the 80s and 90s, two recessions in the 2000s eviscerated most gains in 401k plans. She came to realize that the 401k math that she used in the 80s and the 90s no longer works. That 7% annual compounding invested returns, which is a pillar of the concept, is not a realistic expectation. She's come to realize that. Now, remember Ted Benna, who I just mentioned a couple moments ago, who was the quote unquote father of the 401k. He's since said that 401ks have allowed too many people to make too many mistakes. And that quote, I helped open the door for Wall Street to make even more money than they were already making. That is one thing that I do regret. So what we need is a different solution, right? Because I think it's very obvious that 401ks are in fact a failed financial experiment. Now, and there's a reason that Robert Kiyosaki says that savers are losers. Now, I, I tell people this all the time. It makes no sense to save money in an account for 30 to 40 years that you can't control the key variables of success, things like inflation, taxes, and market risks through boom bust cycles. You need to be able to understand that if you're gonna control the success of what you're doing. There's a reason that most millionaires don't achieve wealth through saving in these qualified plans is because it doesn't 
work. The reality is that investing for cash flow is the only way that you can control the results in your financial life. It's the main reason that I wrote the book, Cash Flow Hacking, which you can get a free copy of, by the way, in the link, if you go down to the link in the description below. But for real, when you look at the world, if you are just 40 years old and you're behind in your retirement savings, you have a steep hill to climb and catch up. And that's why I call this cash flow investing strategy the retirement rescue plan, because Here's the deal. If you're following traditional strategies of saving and retirement and you only got 20 years to make up for the previous 20 years being behind, you are never going to catch up with traditional planning. You're just not going to. So you need to start thinking differently about it. Now, anyone can reach financial freedom. And I'm, I say that word. I hate the word retirement with a decade, within a decade or less, regardless of how old you are when you begin. So my question to you is this. How are you faring in your retirement journey and your savings journey? Are you on track? Are you ahead? Or are you behind like most North Americans? If you're behind, I have to tell you there is hope, but you're not going to find the solution inside of the system that created the problem for you in the first place. That's why I create the content that I do on this channel to give alternative solutions and perspectives to achieve financial success in more predictable ways to give you control of the actual results in your financial success. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you can join the journey to reach financial freedom in the next decade because anyone can do it. Until next video, have a blessed, inspirational day, and I'll see you then.